Hey guys, welcome back to Beginner's Basics. And uh, yeah, we just landed in our drop pod on the Earth-like planet, and we're going to discuss what it means to get out of that drop pod and touch grass. Uh, evidently, it really didn't want to do it right away because I'm standing on top of the pod, but here we go. Oh yeah. So, the core concept of space engineers is that you create a grid. Now, a grid is any creation that is a collection of different blocks. Like, for instance, you can see here that this block is called a light armor slope 2 by one by one base. The block behind it here is an O2 slash H2 generator. A grid is a collection of blocks that have functionality working together to uh, create an effect. Now, before you can even get started with making grids, you need to be able to have the materials in your inventory to, you know, start constructing it. So if you press the I button and pull up your inventory, you'll see that in my inventory all I have is a grinder, a hand drill, and a welder. A welder builds up a block in a grid. A grinder dismantles a block in a grid. And a hand drill allows you to correct resources out of the ground. Now those resources out of the ground need to be processed. Various blocks in the game process resources, including your respawn pod. So the respawn pod has a display screen here. And give me a second, I'm going to go ahead and just make it so that this is sitting on the ground, nice and square. So I'm going to grab all of my landing gear and turn them off, uh, turn them on, unlock, unlock, and there we go. And I'll go over all those settings in another video. So where were we? The survival kit. You use F to interact with things, so holding down F on this screen here, where it's the little screen with the keyboard, I'm recharging my health, my oxygen, my energy, and my hydrogen. And I'm recharging those things because this grid is connected to various pieces. But let's go ahead and start worrying about getting some pieces of material. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my grinder and grind up one piece of metal. You'll see in my inventory I now have a steel plate. And now, if I want, I can put that steel plate back in place, right like that. Now, this steel plate is not the same shape as the one that I had taken out, but we'll put it there as a reminder. If you look at the information on the left, it says if you look at the information on the right, you'll see it says that it needs one steel plate to be completely welded up. You can weld it with your welder and have it be completely functional. A more complicated block, like an atmospheric thruster, has a much higher uh, requirement for the different pieces. In order to craft components, you need to collect ore. Now, the most basic ore is the stone under our feet hold down the left click button and you'll start digging away at the ground and you'll see that there are these stones that pile up around you. You can press F to collect them and then bring them over to the respawn pod. Pressing F on this large yellow opening allows you to gain access to the survival kit's inventory you can drag your stone across. Let's collect about 200 stone and I'll show you the next step. Here's a tip for collecting. If you hold down the F button, you'll automatically pick things up as they are produced and you look at them. And if you press the C button, you'll crouch and get lower into the ground. All right, I've collected 2,000 stone. I know I said 200, but, uh, well, I got a little carried away. And as you can see, I'm in a hole here. Uh, I can 
probably just climb out, but uh, recall, you have your jetpack. Press X to fly out. Be careful, though. You don't want to run out of fuel. Speaking of which, you can go ahead and recharge your power and energy and oxygen. And then go back into the inventory here, drop the stone off. And now we're ready for the next step, which is going to the production tab. Now over here, we are producing in the survival kit. That's where this drop down box is. And in the survival kit, you can produce basic components or basic tools. And you can produce ingots from stone. So if you click it once, it'll queue up the recipe one time. If you hold down control and click, it'll queue up the recipe ten times. If you hold down shift and click, it'll queue up the recipe a hundred times. If you hold control and shift, it'll do a thousand times. Now, it's a smart system. It will only produce as much as it has resources to do so. And once it runs out of stone, it'll just sit there saying that it's missing the items. And you can go back to drilling, you can collect more stone, and dump more in to produce more materials. That noise you just heard was an unknown signal dropping in. That one's about eh, gonna land maybe three kilometers away. We'll ignore it for now. Let's go back into the survival kit. Remember, pressing F on this screen recharges your stuff, but you can press K and it pulls up the control panel. I'm going to hide that other stuff for now just because it's going to be a little bit of a visual clutter. In the survival kit, we want to go back to production. And now that we have some iron and nickel and silicon, we can start producing more components. Let's go ahead and produce 10 steel plate by holding the control button, pressing click. And then we go back over to our inventory and we'll be able to take that out and use it to build things. Oh, look at that. We only were able to produce nine. In this version of Space Engineers, they have two different grid sizes. Small grid, which is what we landed in, and you can make blocks in small size. However, if you want to make a large grid object, you can instead make large blocks. I'm going to put a few blocks down here to make a bit of a platform. Let's pull out our welder and you'll see that the amount of material required to craft and build these up is much higher. 25 steel plates as opposed to a single steel plate over here. Now, the differences between small grid and large grid are not as vast as you'd expect. Small grid requires small, fewer components to build up the individual blocks, but a block of small grid armor plates that's the size of a large grid armor plate is going to require actually more steel plate than one large iron plate. So the cost comparison is pretty similar. The other thing that's a key difference is unless you are utilizing some uh, tricky methodology. The only blocks that you can embed into the voxels are the large grid blocks. That highlights a big difference between a large grid that is static and a small grid that is not static. If I hop in here and I pull up my inventory, my control panel. If I go over to info, you'll see that there are options here, convert to ship and convert to station. Those options are only really applicable to large grid vehicles and they allow you to turn a 
dynamic grid, one that can move around, into a static grid, one that is locked in place by the game engine. Another key difference between small grid and large grid is that certain blocks do not exist in small grid and only have large grid options. Like, if I press 5, you'll see on my hotbar I'm pulling up a basic assembler, and if I press 6, I'm pulling up a basic refinery. These objects, the, these blocks, these tools are upgraded versions of refining ore into ingots or re turning ingots into components. So let's go ahead and put these down on our little platform here and get ready to work on building them up. So we'll put a basic assembler there, and we'll put our basic refinery here. You can always back away a little bit. Decide how you want to attach it, where you're going to attach it. You rotate its facing by pressing the buttons used uh, to insert home, page up, delete, and page down. As you can see in the top corner of the screen, there's a guide on how to rotate it properly. So let's go ahead and put it down like that. And then in the next episode of Beginner's Basics, we're going to talk about getting the grid functional and how to have it be uh, a, an actual advancement and not just some shiny scaffolding. So... Guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick episode of Beginner's Basics. I uh, remind you to subscribe in case you want to catch the next one. And until then, thanks for watching.